Hi, I'm Charlotte and this is my sewing zine vlog for October and in these vlogs I talk about what I've made recently um, and my current works in progress, sewing and knitting. I was just going to talk first about what I've sewn since the last vlog. So in the last vlog I talked about the swimsuit that I've made recently, which is the Opian Pans um, pil Pilata swimsuit. Um, and I've just got a bit of footage of that in action. I made it before a recent holiday to Croatia. Um, so I purposely picked to go on holiday somewhere where I could, uh, where I'd have an excuse to make a swimsuit, where I could wear a swimsuit. Um, and I really enjoyed sewing it. I talked about that in the last vlog, but I also really enjoyed wearing it on holiday. I think the combination of the Liberty swimsuit in fabric, which I got on sale, so it wasn't particularly expensive. Um, and that pattern just, um, I just got a really professional finish. Um, and it just felt really secure in the water and the, Unlike with the first swimsuit I made, which was entirely down to my um, construction and finish, where it, it felt a little bit dubious um, that the swimsuit was definitely going to all stay together the first few times I wore it. Um, and also the first swimsuit I made, it wasn't in real swimsuit in fabric. It was probably more a um, athletic type fabric or um, a dance type fabric. Um, and it... it holds the water for ages after you've come out of the pool so this one just felt so professional in comparison and then another make which i was going to talk about which i also made ready for that holiday was a pair of closet case patterns pietra shorts so here they are and they're in a linen fabric from minerva there's that pocket pocket construction is really cool um and they're a bit creased but the elastic on the back so yeah i highly recommend this pattern as well I um, purposely chose to start with a short variation, partly because I wanted to wear them for my holiday, um, but also because it uses less fabric. Um, and they actually, um, I think for, for a short and a trouser pattern, the Pietras actually use more fabric than a lot of patterns um, because of the way that the pocket etc is constructed. And obviously you've got some additional fabric in there because you're gathering it with the elastic compared to trousers that would have, or shorts that would have a zip. So I started with the shorts, which use less fabric um, and as a way of try testing the fit. Um, but I was really pleased with these. I made them in a straight size 10. I didn't make any alterations. Obviously, you can customise how much you gather the back. Um, but yeah, no alterations. And I found them really comfortable um, and uh, really enjoyed wearing them. And the fit's good. So I'm going to move on to making some of the trousers for the autumn and winter. So then the other uh, main thing that I've sewn since I last vlogged was the Georgie dress by Alice & Co Patterns. And this is the second pattern that they've released in collaboration with the Victorian Albert Museum in London to um, celebrate their current Mary Quant exhibition. Um, and the pattern is based on a Mary Quant original, which is included in the exhibition and I think owned by the V&A. Um, and um, so, I'll show you, so I'm wearing it at the moment. So this is the dress. As you can see, it's got, so it's got a zip up the back in terms of fit, and then it also has this waistband um, tied around, just in a bow. That's just loose, it's not connected to the dress. It's got ruffles on the sleeves, ruffles on the bodice, um, a fairly fitted bodice, and it should have a pleated skirt, but I didn't have enough of the fabric, so mine's just gently gathered. But yeah, so this is my Georgie dress. So I was really excited when Alice & Co um, announced this launch um, because I really liked the look of the original Georgie dress and I thought it'd be really good fun to try. Um, I haven't tried any of their patterns, so to try one of their patterns and also to um, try one of the patterns that's linked to the v and exhibition and that's based on an original Mary Quant design. Um, so, and then, so I was excited about the release anyway. And also the original Georgie dress, which is in the exhibition, is also made in a striped cotton, somewhat similar to this. And I had this fabric in my stash. Um, this fabric is a cotton um, produced at Masson Mill in uh, Matlock Bath, which um, was a large industrial mill, and it's now a museum. And they still produce um, a small amount of fabric, which you can buy in person when you're on a tour of the museum. Um, which I think they probably weave for um, exhibition purposes, etc., and probably to raise some funds. Um, it's really cheap. They so these this dress is entirely constructed from offcuts that are purchased in the museum, 
And I think I, th- I think the offcuts vary in size actually. Um, they were probably all over a metre though. Um, and I probably had about three maybe. Um, but because this pattern does use quite a large amount of fabric, obviously, especially if you do the pleated skirt. But I managed to get um, the dress out of the offcuts I had. Um, and I was I was excited to use that fabric, which was just sat in my stash, um, given the, the relative similarity to the original George dress. The fabric that I used on my um, my little uh, ruffles was also from Matt and Mill, and this is a, one of the other fabrics that they uh, weave and make available for sale. So uh, I had so this dress. It was a bit of a um, it, it was more time consuming than I expected and fit, I think as a result of that really um, I don't love it as much as I expected to but I've got it to a point now where I, I am comfortable with the fit and comfortable to wear it and I wore it out for lunch yesterday so I'm glad that um, I got to that stage. In terms of um, the issues I had with it they were mainly about the fabric choice so obviously I picked this fabric because the style was similar the um, stripe was similar to the original um but it's uh well there were various things so if I, if I show you it's got quite a sheen to it I don't know if you'll be able to see which means that any uh fit issues any creases etc you can see some creasing since I've been wearing it today um are really visible so you've got that the I decided to use this contrast fabric for the ruffles partly because I thought I just thought that these fabrics would go well together um, and partly because I only had limited amounts of each fabric so I thought I'd be safer if I was using an alternative um, offcut uh, for the, the ruffles. But this fabric is actually slightly heavier than this one even though they're both cottons um, and so as a result these uh, ruffles originally would basically wouldn't stay uh, upright so I had to stitch, I've stitched along here which isn't in the original pattern. Um, obviously, I didn't have enough for the original skirt design, but that was fine. The original length of the skirt, I think I followed the pattern for that. Obviously, because I was working with offcuts, some bits I um, tweaked slightly. But at the original length, in these fabrics, um, when I first tried it on, it looked so frumpy. It looked Obviously, this is a 60s design, being Mary Quant, and it looked much, much older. It felt more Edwardian or, you know, Victorian. Um, so I cut the dress much shorter. So cut it, uh, where does it fall now? So it's about knee length now. Um, and that ma- made massive improvement. The other thing was that um, I'll have to check exactly which size I cut, but I, um, as per the instructions, so the instructions are really good um, from Alice & Co. And in their instructions, they get you to construct the bodice in the lining fabric, try it on and test the fit. Obviously, you don't um, get quite the full effect, but it gives you a good indication. And when I did that, it was coming up too big. So I did size down. I actually think I probably could have sized down again. Um, I think I might be the second size. I'm not sure in the pattern, but I do think I probably could have sized down again because there's probably a little bit of looseness in this bodice still. And I think in this fabric um, in particular, um, it would have been better to be a bit more tight fitting. But as I say, happy with um, where I got to. If I was going to make the dress again, as I say, I think I would size down. Um, And the other thing, I think I... Um, obviously was trying to go for a fabric as similar as possible to the original but I actually think in a more modern fabric I would much prefer the look of this dress on me so I think um, I think a more uh, there's a lovely um, some in some lovely solids um, amongst the other um, pictures on Instagram or the tester pictures and I think if I was going to make it again that's what I'd go for. So the next thing that I was going to talk about was a totally uh, new to me craft So I've mentioned before that I'm a member of the Birmingham Guild of Weavers, Spinners and Dyers and at a recent workshop they had the tutor Julie Hedges coming in for a split ply braiding workshop. So I'm always quite keen to try out a new craft um, and I thought I'd give it a go. I'd also seen some of the other members of the guild are braiders and I'd seen some of their work um, and thought that looked really impressive so I thought it'd be fun to give it a go. So 
Julie Hedges. So I bought the book. So this is, you can see one of Julie's books, ply split braiding. And the way that ply split braiding works, I'll show you. So you basically start off by creating cords, um, which are multiple ply cords. So if I show you on the end of one of the pieces I made, so this is, so they're the cords that you're working with. And to create them, you buy the cord in a different color. So say the pink, and then you um, twist using a cord twister, um, the cords together so that you have a cord made up of multiple plies. And then you use this tool, if you can see it. So it looks like that to, um, basically split those plies apart so you find the right place and you push it through create a gap between the plies in the cord and then you basically thread it in on itself um, and depending on the threading pattern you can create all sorts of different designs so these so it was um kind of a day course probably about 10 to 4 um but with, with break for lunch and tea and cake breaks um, and i made these four braids so i'm trying to show you so you can just see different kind of designs you can easily um, achieve as a beginner. That's the same design again with a different colourway. And so yeah, so that's those are the cords that I created or the braids that I created in the class. Um, and uh, yeah, they're, they're fairly easy to do. Obviously, they require minimal materials. Um, so I bought the book and the tool and I thought that um, I might have a go at creating some more, sat in front of TV or similar, um, or at another guild meeting. Um, in terms of what you do with them, so Julie, um, in her book, she has designs for bowls. She has designs for jewellery. Um, belts etc and um, obviously those are more advanced techniques or obviously if you're just creating simple um, braids like these you could attach them to a bag etc so make kind of a tassel so yeah so it was a good fun course and it was nice and easy to pick up which is always quite satisfying with when you've only got a day to learn something so where else have I been recently so um, another thing that happened in October was Sobrum. So Sobrum is the Sew meetup I organise in my hometown town of Birmingham. So it's an annual meetup um, and we get together, we go around the fabric shops in Birmingham um, and uh, Birmingham City Centre and Mosley to visit Guthrie Garney um, and obviously there's lots of uh, talking, uh, you know, getting drinks together or going out for lunch um, and we have a charity raffle. So I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who came to Sobrum and also to all the companies who donated a prize for the raffle because we were able to raise £925 for Click Sergeant, which was brilliant. Um, and we also have a, a pattern and fabric swap at Gafrigani too. So yeah, so it was um, it was great to get everyone together again for the Sobrum meetup. It's brilliant that people are still interested in coming six years on from when it got started. Um, and I mean, when I started it, there had been a Birmingham meetup um, on a smaller scale uh, the year before, I think, or two years before, and there wasn't one happening that year. And I just thought, right, well, I really want to go to a Birmingham meetup. And if there's not one happening, then I'll organise it myself. Um, and I have done, ever so, done so ever since. So, yeah, as I say, we're six years in now. Um, I wanted to make a new dress to wear for this year's meetup um, and failed to finish it on time. So I'm hoping I um, am attending a meetup next weekend. I'm attending Sew Up North in Leeds, um, organised by Rebecca. And I'm hoping that I might finish the dress for that meetup instead. So I was just going to show you what I bought this year at Sobrum. So I bought three fabrics. So the first one was this Libby sweatshirt in which you probably will have seen before. So I've actually had a, um, a small piece of this exact fabric in the past, which I bought from Guthrie Garney, um, and I pieced it with another fabric because um, I just bought a small section. It was probably um, in their off-cut um, basket or somewhere. And I pieced it with another fabric to make a sweatshirt some years ago. Um, and uh, so to this time, this fabric, I bought from the Liberty Man, who is extremely popular. Um, at 
at every Sobrum. Um, so he, the Liberty Man, he's actually called the Little World of Fabric on eBay as an eBay shop, and he also has a stall in Birmingham Rag Market. It used to be indoors, um, and then uh, probably some. I'm not sure when. Um, the stall left anyway. So say last year, um, his stall was no longer in the rag market. I, th I think he might have had a shop somewhere else. Um, but anyway, he'd vanished from the rag market for some time. And then uh, during Sobrum, we realised, I hadn't realised in advance, um, that he was back. And he now has a stall outside. Um, and it's located between the two uh, building market buildings. So there's a small row of stalls there. And he's now there. And he sells as... Uh, he's uh, well it's not actually his name as I say he's his shop on eBay is actually called the little world of fabric but he's well known as the Liberty man um, from uh, all the sewists who visit because he sells Liberty fabrics um only Liberty fabrics and he has a really good range he's got silks cottons jerseys and sweatshirting so yeah he was very proper popular at Sobrum. I would say, I'm not sure it's true of all the fabrics, I think some of them have faults, um, but I think those are heavily discounted, so I think the other fabrics uh, don't actually. So yes, yeah, so that was my first purchase. And then the other thing that I bought, so having um, talked previously about the Closet Case Pietra uh, shorts and the fact I want to make some trousers, I bought from Barry's Fabrics two um, suiting fabrics to make Pietra trousers. So this is the first. So it's a fairly traditional suiting fabric in a grey. I thought it would make a nice um, simple pair of Pietras that will go with pretty much anything. And that's a wool or a wool blend. And then I also bought this, which it was a pure wool from Barry's. Um, and I can't remember actually, I should I try and take a photo, but I forgot. I'll have an I'll pop in and have a look. But this was really affordable, I can't remember. I think it was less than £10 a metre. Um, and it's pure wool. Um, and it's really nice um, little stripe with some grey and some blue. So again, that's going to be a second pair of Pietra trousers to wear for work, etc. So in addition to Sobrum, I think the following week, I also visited the Knitting and Stitching Show at Alexandra Palace in London. Um, because of already buying some fabric at Sew Brum and knowing that I had Sew Up North um, coming soon and obviously having a fairly full stash. Um, I didn't buy any fabric, I was pretty restrained, but I did get a couple of patterns and I was just gonna show you those now. So the first of those was BG Patterns, uh, their bomber jacket pattern. So if you don't know BG, they're a French um, sewing pattern company who make menswear patterns. Um, and uh, Olivier, who's one of the um, owners of BG Patterns, um, I have previously been fabric shopping with in Paris. Um, I was introduced to him through Carmen Bouchard, um, and both Olivier and Carmen have been on uh, Cousuman, the French sewing bee. So yeah, so it was lovely to meet um, or catch up with Olivier at uh, Alexandra Palace um, and to pick up one of their patterns and this one so as i say they make menswear patterns but one of their team um whose woman was wearing this bomber jacket because in the smaller size um obviously it also work it should also work for me so um i'm keen to give this a go for myself and for phil so that was one of the patterns i brought home and then the other one um was a sew over it pattern and it's the amelia jacket which was one of the patterns included in Lisa Comfort's magazine a few months back. Um, and I actually have, when this pattern was released, I immediately um, wanted to make it, or I knew uh, that I would like to make it with a fabric from my stash. Um, but I've been trying not to buy patterns until I'm ready to make them, um, because obviously I otherwise you build up a stash of patterns, the same as with fabric. So what I've been trying to do now is not buy the pattern until I'm ready to go. Um, and I just keep a list of the patterns that I wanna make so that I don't forget about uh, the releases and get distracted with just newer releases. Um, but this one um, was on offer at the show and it was a really good show offer. It was five pounds for the magazine and the pattern. So I thought, right, that's the time to get it. 
and maybe to hurry me up with my plans and I'm going to show you. So the fabric that I am um, planning to use for this um, is, <laughs> it's slightly mad, I brought this at last year's up north so I must be around a year that this has been in my stash um, and it's a faux animal, uh, like a faux leather um, animal print, is it a snake print or crocodile print, I'm not sure. Um, so that's the one side and then the other side is like a shearling soft fabric um, and when I so I bought this at last year's Silk North um, on a random whim because um, I'd been I'd been quite restrained at last year's Silk North I didn't buy any fabric um, for most of the day and then the last shop I was looking in the kind of faux, faux furs and um, more novelty fabrics and I bought two mad fabrics I think I uh, just went for it at the end so this was one of them and straight away I, I thought of a jacket um, a crop jacket with a shearling collar so when the Amelia pattern was released I thought right that's perfect so I'm hoping to give that a try soon obviously I'll have to make some tweaks to pattern the pattern is lined but I won't be lining it because I want this shearling um, fabric or this side of the fabric um, to be against my skin and to be visible and then there's some other bits there's an elasticated section in the back so I just think I need to be careful about the um how dense this fabric is and how that will work um maybe need to use contrast we'll see but yeah so i'm hoping to try that and um, get to that very soon now that i've got fabric and pan ready to go so the next thing i was going to talk about was something that i treated myself to recently so i wear headbands quite regularly and so when joy um from pink Coat Club announced that she was collaborating with uh, Adornments by Rasheen to release some sewn themed head headbands. I thought, right, I'll have to treat myself to one of those. So this is the one I went for. It's the scissors design. It's got a little knot on the top. Um, yeah. So I've already worn that quite a bit. Um, I'm really pleased with that. Um, and then also in headband news, um, I also um, thought that it would be quite good fun to make uh, a few headbands myself to match um, outfits where I'd got fabric left over. Um, so I had a look online and I've ordered these from, let's have a look. so they're called Petersham's Millinery Supp Supplies, the shop. Um, and I've ordered these. They have got different uh, headbands with different widths and they've got some that are already covered, but obviously they cost more. So this is kind of the most basic um, supplier that they sell. And this is in the, the thicker width, because obviously you can get narrower. Um, so, yeah, so I ordered a small selection of these. Um, I think they were £1... Let's have a look. They're £1.25 each. Obviously, you have to pay postage on top of that. Um, so, obviously, if you, if you think you're definitely going to order... Um, going to make lots, then you want to order lots uh, to get the best value out of your postage. I ordered three, because I thought that's probably more than enough um but yeah if i show you so this is fairly fairly wide um but yeah i'm gonna have a go so i think i'm gonna might coat it first and then i'm gonna drape some fabric over sew it up and some wrap some bits around the end to protect the edges um obviously it's already narrowed at the end which was the design i was after so yeah so i'll uh, i'll let you know how i get on um, but I thought that would be quite good fun where I've got a scrap of fabric left over to make a matching headband, especially as I do wear them regularly, the ones I've got. Um, and it'd be nice to have some that match, but also in complementary colours, because I've got an orange one that I really like and wear quite a lot, but obviously orange doesn't go with everything. So maybe some black and white uh, fabric, etc. So... Uh, finally, I was going to talk about what I um, have been working on currently or what I'm working on currently. Um, and I was going to start with a knitting project, if I can find. Here it is. So I decided um, Untangling Knots re have uh, recently released, you might have seen, a Halloween themed collection of knitting patterns. Um, and the first one that they released, which is called Arachne, um, for a sweater or a jumper with a 
uh, spiderweb pattern on the yoke, um, that was the one that really caught my attention. Um, and so I have made a start this and that. So it, it'll be that way up actually. So you start from the, the top and you knit down. And you can see that the spider web is forming. So we're getting the effect wanted. Obviously I've only got that far and we're not that far off Halloween. So I think it's not gonna be ready. But anyway, I shall carry on regardless. Um, but, whoops, just pick up my stitches. So yeah, so it's in a sport weight yarn um, and I do find sport weight yarns much harder um, to get hold of in the UK and in terms of having uh, a decent selection. I ordered this yarn from Loop London. I tried to do a gate, I started off doing a gauge swatch because obviously being a sweater I want it to fit um, and I could not get the gauge swatch right. I so I, I went, I was on holiday um, in Devon at the time. Um, uh, yeah, I th so I took selection of needles with me to Devon. I couldn't get the right size. So found a knitting shop while I was away, bought some more needles, still couldn't get the right size. And this fabric is, not, um, sorry, this yarn is not that soft that I used. Um, and as I was sizing down, the material that it was creating was getting really dense um, and didn't feel like it would be particularly nice to wear. So what I did in the end was just go back to the original needles recommended in the pattern. And I thought I'll start knitting um and see how it's looking um i might the, the yoke section um was the same amount of stitches for the size that um is the one closest to my body measurement and for the size below so i've started off um and then when it, when i get to the point after the yoke where the uh, number of stitches would diverge between those sizes i might size down um, but it's quite a close fitting pattern so I think I have got a bit of leeway if it ends up being a little bit too big um, hopefully it will still look wearable but anyway giving it a go and I am pretty pleased with how that spider web is so before I cast on the arachne pattern I actually had a knitting project on the go that I've had on the go for months um, and um, I am trying not to cast on new knitting projects without finishing existing so as not to end up with loads of work in progress. So I decided I wouldn't start the Arachne until this was finished. And so it it worked as a successful motivation and I got this shawl finished. So this is the Observatory Shawl, which is patterned by Kate Davis. Um, and it's in a really soft, I think I might have shown it before, it's a really soft yarn, it's really floaty. Um, it's lace weight uh, yarn and obviously that pattern around the edge is a lace pattern you can see so it, it's called a hap in terms of the pattern so hap or shawl pattern yeah it's... and i bought this as a kit i actually brought it as a kit to give as a gift um but decided that um the recipient wouldn't enjoy um this particular pattern because obviously that Lace design is a little bit fiddly, quite time consuming. Um, so yeah, I bought a different present for them instead. And then I had the kit in my stash and thought that I didn't want it to go to waste. So I knitted it up um, and I haven't worn it yet. Um, but as the weather's now getting colder, I'll be hopefully wearing that soon. So unlike my knitting, where I am quite good not to have lots of abandoned works in progress um, and unfinished objects, um, I. I'm normally working on multiple things with my sewing, multiple sewing projects at once. Um, but uh, the at the moment, I've been trying not to start any new projects um, since the dress that I started for Sew Brub. That is a, an exception, which I will finish. That's still abandoned at the moment. Um, but I've been trying to revisit some of the existing works in progress and UFOs and finished objects and to get those finished. Um, and I think part of the motivation for that is that quite a few of them were more um, autumn winter garments from last year, which I abandoned when the weather improved. So I have um, had a bit more motivation really to get back to those. 
So the first one, that, or the one I was going to talk about today um, and show you is a jacket which I um, started last autumn or winter, I think winter. And as, a, as with the previous fabric that I showed, this was the other slightly mad fabric that I bought from last year, so up north, and it's a faux fur fabric. This is fabric. So I bought this fabric with a particular project in mind. Um, and that was um, inspired by a picture I saw in, in one of the fashion magazines of a fur coat from M&S, um, which had a similar silhouette to the Tamarack jacket, um, and it was in a fairly mad uh, faux fur, brightly coloured faux fur. Um, and when I saw it, I fancied having a go at making it, but it was finding the right faux fur. Um, and then when I was on last year's so up north, I spotted this one and thought, right, that will that's the one, I'll get that and have a go. And so... That's what I've been making with it. So it's it's almost there actually. So it's lined with a Liberty uh, fabric, which was also from the Liberty Man, but which I've had from him for quite some time. Bought that sometime last year for coat making. Then on purpose, and I've got shiny uh, sleeves. That's not the Liberty fabric. Um, so it's not quite finished, but it's almost there. Uh, so it's quite satisfying that before this year's so up north. One of the two fabrics I bought yeah, last year is all sewn up, or almost sewn up. The only thing that I haven't done yet is finished the front. So obviously the, with the Tamarack jacket, uh, so well, one of the key things with the Tamarack, obviously it's quilted, which I haven't done. Uh, I just wanted the silhouette rather than anything else. Um, it's The edges are bound with bias binding on the Tamarack, but I didn't want to flatten the fur with a bias binding. So all I've done is I cut the jacket, all the pattern pieces out twice, um, in the faux fur and in the lining fabric. And, and obviously some interfacing as well. Um, and then I just constructed the two jackets, one in the lining fabric and one in the exterior fabric and sewed them together. So the edges are just, that's how I've done the edges. It's just the two fabrics sewn to each other. Um, but then the other key thing about the Tamarack is that it's finished with, uh, so it's closed with press studs, but I'm not that keen on press studs in this faux fur, I don't think. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. Um, I was thinking of attaching a zip instead of coat zip, separating coat zip, um, but I'm also slightly wary of attaching a zip to this faux fur and whether the fur will get stuck in the zip. Um, so yeah, I haven't decided yet, but otherwise it's pretty much there. So I need to make a decision on the front closure um, and then get that jacket finished so that I can start wearing it this autumn winter. So that's everything that I was going to share with you today. Um, thanks for watching. I'll be back next month, hopefully with some footage from Sew Up North meetup. Um, I was hoping to share some footage from Sew Brum with you today. Um, I was hoping to get some photos because despite there having been six Sew Brum meetups, I have very few photos. I got no photos and I got no video footage. But um, given that I'll be attending Sew Up North rather than um, selling raffle tickets, etc., as I was at Sew Brum, hopefully I should have a bit more uh, time to get some footage um, and hopefully I'll also have some more finished projects to show you and um, potentially including an arachne sweater but I think it'll probably still be work in progress. Mm -hmm.